Welcome back everyone to another video on interactive components feature in Figma. So in this video, I thought I'll show you how to create this input field experience. And of course you can't create a real input field experience in Figma with the current features that we have, but we can actually try to emulate a very close experience of an input field with this current features that we have. And the best part is you can do everything with just a single frame that we have right here instead of using multiple frames and multiple complicated interactions between them. So let's quickly see a demo of this one. So here we have the preview opened up and if you notice we have two fields which are already pre-filled. So this is a disabled state so even if I click on this nothing is going to happen. And then we have these three empty fields. So once I press on this name field right here you can see that animation how it went up and you have your cursor blinking here waiting for the user to input the text. So once I press on spacebar which is the key I assigned to enter the text and then you have the cursor again waiting here. So to exit out of this field you just need to press on enter or return because that is the key I have assigned for the interaction. And there's also one more variation in this that is to show the error scenario for which I've assigned the key X. So once I press on the X key, you have this error message pop out from the field right here. And then again, you can press on space bar and just press on enter. And that's it. You have completed the whole form with the interactions uh, using just a single frame right here. So let's quickly get started and see how to create this. So here we are on a new file in Figma. And as you can see, I've already placed a frame with multiple layers inside this, but we are just gonna focus on this input field for this video. So I'll just place this outside. And if you can notice, there's just a frame with multiple layers inside this, structured with auto layout and all. We can actually create a simpler version of this, but uh, if you want that exact interaction that we saw in the demo, we need all these layers and all these uh, auto layout structure. So I'll just try to quickly explain you what each of this is gonna do. So the first thing is a main auto layout group in which we have an end cursor and a starting cursor to emulate that blinking cursor effect and then you have a mask value auto layout so this is just a mask layer inside which we have the value so if you notice this shape right here which is of width 0.01 this basically expands you know and that is how each of this alphabets get revealed one by one and then the next thing you have is this key value which acts as a placeholder and then just moves up and then you have this box with just a fill and a border and then finally you have this error message which is a red text as you can see it's just hidden behind the box right here so those are the different layers that we have uh, that we created in this input group. So I'll just click on this, right click and say create component. There you go, we have a component ready. And we just need to create multiple variants out of this to which we'll basically add interactions in between them. So on the right side, we have this option called as variants. Just click on the plus button right here that basically adds a new variant to your component. So this variant, we basically want this text to go up. So the first thing I'll do is I'll make the size of this as 12 and then we'll take it a bit above. And then you want the cursor to appear. The cursor is a start cursor. So I'll make the opacity of this as 100. And now we want this cursor to keep blinking. So for that, we need a new variant. So I'll press on this uh, variant right here and say command D or control D that adds a new variant. And here you basically want this start cursor to turn between opacity 0 and 100. So I'll make this one 0 and you want these two variants to keep looping. That creates the effect of the cursor blinking. And the next thing you want is to duplicate this one right here and basically bring in the value for which I'll just increase the size of the mask that we have right here. So I'll make this like 200 or you can extend it to the end if you want to have a larger text. Something like this here should be fine. And now basically you want the start cursor to fade away. So I'll make the start cursor 0 opacity and you want your end cursor to be visible. So we'll make this as 100% opacity and we want a different variant to keep this cursor blinking for which I'm just going to say duplicate and in this case I just want this cursor right here to keep blinking which is the end cursor so I'll make this opacity zero and finally you want a state where you just have a completely filled state so I'll just duplicate this one itself which is a right one and then you can have some extra variants like uh, one for the disabled state and one for you know having the error state so in the disabled state I just uh, change the fill value of this one to something a bit grayish and in the error state I want the stroke of this one to change to red and you want your error message to pop out. So something like that. So those are the different variants you can create. We can actually create a lot more variants, but uh, for this demo tutorial, I think these should be enough. And then you can go ahead and actually rename your variants for better understanding and usage purpose. But I'm just gonna skip that for now and directly jump onto the prototype stage. So the first interaction will add on the default state. So this one is gonna link to the next one where you want the cursor to appear and the placeholder to go on the top. So here on click, I'll just do change to variant two. And this is going to be smart animate which is good 300 milliseconds that is good and when you are on this cursor state you want to loop between these two stages or variants so that you have this blinking cursor effect for which I'm going to link this one to the next variant here but here you don't want to click you're going to enable it at after delay so after delay of one millisecond which is the least one I want to animate to this stage maybe increase the time to like 500 milliseconds and you want this one to loop back to this one so these two have to keep looping and that is why I'm linking this back to this with the same settings which is after delay 
delay of one millisecond and 500 milliseconds. So these two will keep uh, looping and that is how you'll have the blinking cursor effect. And now you want to link this one to the next entered state. So this one right here. And here you want to actually have an input from the keyboard and that is why we'll be using key or gamepad. And in this field, you want to give a character from the keyboard. So I usually like using spacebar. So I'll just press on spacebar and there you go. We have space here, thousand milliseconds because uh, you basically want to emulate the typing experience here. You can increase this if you want. So one second is pretty good. And then you want the same experience with this one also because at any stage, the user can press spacebar between these two. So on this one also link it to the same one with the same settings, which is key space thousand milliseconds. And at this variant, you want the blinking cursor effect again. So we'll be doing the same thing that we did here. So this would keep blinking. And then finally, you want both of these to enter the final fill state, which basically can happen on enter. So I'll go for key and the key I'll give here is enter or return key. And you want this at 300 milliseconds, which should be fine. And the same thing with this one too. I'll link it to this one, key pressed and enter key and smart animate all good. So everything looks good here. All our animations and effects are ready. So the disabled state, I don't want any interaction, but for the error state, you can give an interaction. So maybe, in this state, I can link it to this one with a different key just to emulate or show that experience. So on the key, I'll basically give X here. So when you press on X, it basically navigates to this error state. So this should be fine, all good. And even at this state, you want to give the same thing, which is key press X and smart animate all good. And this one, you can give the same thing back to this state right here. And this would be on key press or uh, use space bar or any key that you like. So those are the different interactions that you have to add among your variants right here. And I think, uh, we are pretty much done. Uh, let's quickly have a preview of this one, see how this behaves. So now we can just go to assets panel right here. And here you have the input field or the component that you just created. Since it's auto layout, you can actually give any width that you want, but I'll just leave it at what it was and just align it to the center right there and create different instances or duplicate instances of this one. So I'll just keep duplicating it and you can actually give different variants here. So this one, you can actually give it as a disabled state and this one, you can keep it at the fill state and to change the value right here, you can just select on the value and the key field here. So click on the key field right here and make this into city and the value field, which is right here, just click on it and say whatever value you want. So I'll say New York. We are all done. All I have to do is just click on this and say preview. So here we have the preview opened up and these won't be interactive because uh, we don't have any interactions. There's a disabled state and there's a fill state. So once I click on the name field right here, you have the cursor animation right there. And once I press on spacebar, you have this and I press on enter. That's it. So that is how you can create an interactive input field with just a couple of uh, variants and a single frame right here, as you can see. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it informative and helpful. Thanks for watching.